Well, good morning and happy Easter. Whether you're here with us in person or whether you'll be um, joining us a little bit later, I hope you're able to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. At this time, we'll move into our litany of the candles. Christ the Lord is risen today. Let us proclaim together the mystery of faith. Christ is risen. And Christ will come again. This time the worship team will lead us.
you join with me now in a responsive statement of faith. Let us share the words of the Apostle Paul, the good news of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. And now, by the grace of God, we are who we are, and as we await the coming of the Lord Jesus in glory, God's grace is with us, and God's grace is not in vain. This is what we proclaim. This is what we have come to believe. This is why we are who we are, the people of faith, who live by the Sermon on the Mount and live to change the world one heart at a time. This time we'll have our next song. Thank you. 
that sealed the promise your very body began to to invite my friends to come forward for the children's story at this time. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Yeah, sit wherever you like. It's good to see you. Let's fold our hands into our Bibles. This is the Bible. We'll open it wide. There are many stories of people inside. Big people, little people like me and you. We'll listen carefully to hear what they do. Well, today's story is called Jesus is Risen. Easter is a great holiday. Some of us hunt for Easter eggs. Some of us get dressed up very special for church. Some of us get Easter baskets with candy. Families get together and enjoy a fun holiday with good food. People love to celebrate Easter. That's because Easter is the day we remember Jesus was raised from the dead. Jesus came to tell us about God. Jesus came to tell us God loves us and cares for us and someday will make everything great. Some people did not like that. And they told lies about Jesus and other people killed him. But God had a plan. God's plan was for Jesus to rise from the dead. Jesus rose up and his friends saw him and they were happy. Jesus told his friends that someday everybody would be raised and come back to life and we would be happy and together forever. Happy Easter to everyone. Thank you, God, for your wonderful plan. Thank you, God, because Jesus is risen from the dead. I have a page for each one of you here. There we go. Thank you so much. For coming forward, and I think we have Sunday school ready for some of you folks. <laughs> now I'll share our offering statement. 
Through the resurrection of Jesus, we are offered not only eternal life, but abundant life now. We see life differently, not as the accumulation of things at the expense of others, but the enjoyment of all things with each other. We reject the lie of this world that there is not enough for us all and embrace the truth that when we are guided by the love of God, there is plenty for everyone. We celebrate the offerings of our heart given here this morning or shared through direct deposit or through the mail or gifts in kind, kind gifts of giving of our time, energy, and prayers. All of this is because of the truth we proclaim today. As the angel said, don't be afraid. I know that you're looking for Jesus who was crucified. He isn't here because he's been raised from the dead, just as he said. Let us go before God in our offering prayer. Jesus Christ, Savior, receive these our offerings, given in love, shared through you, and guided in its disbursements by your Holy Spirit. Inspire us to greater things as a congregation and as individuals, that all may come to know that you are Lord, you are Savior, and you are risen. This we pray in your name. Amen. This time the worship team will lead us.
Our prayer focus this week is forgiveness. Forgiveness can be as easy as a breath. It can be as difficult as lifting an impossibly large stone which was dropped in our path. Forgiveness can happen in a moment. Forgiveness can take a lifetime or even a portion of eternity. None of us has the right to decide for another how quickly they ought to forgive. For some wrongs are greater than others, but we can pledge to walk with each other through this journey. We should not walk the journey of forgiveness alone. Let us recall the story of the resurrected Jesus who walked for miles with two of his disciples on the road to Emmaus and who did not recognize him until they sat down together for the breaking of the bread. One of the ways we bless each other on the journey of forgiveness is to break bread together, to be present in the mundane and the magnificent moments of life, to patiently support, to listen, and to encourage each other to seek professional help when the wounds are very deep. Forgiveness is not an item to be checked off a list as we rush through it. Throughout this journey, let us recall the words of Jesus from the cross. Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Well, they knew perfectly well what they were doing, but God, whose love is infinite, has infinite resources for forgiveness. We who are imperfect and whose time on earth is limited may experience a little more difficulty, but let us focus our prayers on forgiveness this week to actively seek forgiveness from those we have hurt and to forgive those who have hurt us as we are able and with the help of God. scriptures this morning so our first is from Colossians 3 1 through 4 and if we'll read this together if then you were raised with Christ seek what is above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God think of what is above not what is on earth for you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God when Christ, who is your life, appears, and you too will appear with Christ in glory. Next, our reading from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 28, starting at verse 1 from the Inclusive Bible. After the Sabbath, at the first day of the week, was dawning, Mary Magdala came with Mary to inspect the tomb. Suddenly, there was a severe earthquake. An angel of God descended from heaven, rolled back the stone, and sat on it. The angel's appearance was like lightning with garments white as snow. The guards shook with fear and fell down as though they were dead. Then the angel spoke, addressing the women, Don't be afraid. I know you're looking for Jesus, the crucified, who is no longer here. Jesus has been raised exactly as it was foretold. Come and see the burial place. Then go quickly and tell the disciples that Jesus has risen from the dead and now goes ahead of you to Galilee. You will see Jesus there. This is the message. That is the message I have for you. The women hurried away from the tomb with awe and great joy and ran to carry the good news to the disciples. Suddenly, Jesus stood before them and said, Shalom. The women came up, embraced Jesus' feet, and worshipped. At this, Jesus said to them, Don't be afraid. Go tell the disciples to go to Galilee, where they will see me. This is my message for you. This is the message that the angel is speaking to us. 
you are fit to listen to the words of angels, and you are free to act. You know, each of the uh, gospel writers tells us something different about the resurrection of Jesus. Matthew is the one that tells us that a guard was set before the tomb in order to make sure nobody came to steal the body of Jesus. Uh, The uh, strange thing is they thought the danger was from outside of the tomb. People who might have stolen the body, and this may sound strange to us, but to use it in medicinal compounds, to, to take items away for veneration, uh, to, to take hold of this valuable object. And so they were to keep people out. They didn't realize that the true wonder, the true danger, if you will, could come from within and burst out. We are told that the guard, when they beheld an angel seated on the tomb, were struck as those who were dead, unable to move. But the women who had come to minister to the body of Jesus and to fully prepare it for burial, something that had been neglected because of the haste in which everything was done before the coming of the Sabbath, Though they were afraid, and indeed the angel had to tell them, do not be afraid, they stood their ground. They stood their ground, and the angel told them, this is my message for you. They were fit to receive this message, just as we are as well. And indeed, having received the message, and run forward to tell the disciples they become the first to behold the risen Lord falling at his feet and worshiping and being told again, this time by the risen Lord, do not be afraid. Now, the other scripture from Colossians, which is part of the scriptures to be shared, here on this Easter Sunday. It might seem a little odd, and yet as I began to look at it, I started to think, well, who were the people that were receiving it, and what had happened to them? Paul wrote from prison, probably not long before he was beheaded by the Romans at the command of Nero, wrote from prison to Ephesus, a church, one of those that he had helped to found. And he told them, Look for the things that are above where Christ is sitting at God's right hand. You died and your life is hidden. He's writing this around the year 61 or 62 A.D. And that caused me to dig a little deeper, to go down the rabbit hole and ask myself, what happened? Why, Why this message? In 60 A.D., in 60 A.D., People indeed would have had to look up and try to dig their way out because a great earthquake hit the biblical cities of Colossae and Laodicea. Laodicea is one of the seven cities of Revelation receiving a direct message from Jesus. That was a very rich and powerful city. And the historian Tacitus, when noting this earthquake of 60 A.D., which geologists think was at least 6.0, if not greater, did not require any help from Rome to rebuild. They were so wealthy, they refused any help. But Colossae, which had once been a great city, was now little more than a village. But there, the earth shook, columns fell, walls came tumbling down, people were trapped beneath, hoping to be raised, hoping for the stone to be moved hoping to be found in time. Uh, Sometimes scientists look to the stories from the ancient world to determine what actually happened. Just yesterday I was reading 
that there were a series of volcanoes during the Middle, of a middle Ages which, uh, which would have caused a winter of several years. And the exact year that these volcanoes erupted was determined because monks had left behind in their journals occasions when lunar eclipses were seen and yet were dark and invisible and frightening. And that's what would have happened in the year of a great volcano. The dust would have obscured it. You can tell a lot by reading what people tell. And in Colossae, there is the story that there was a great thunder-like voice speaking and rushing water and a column of fire that stretched from earth to heaven. And in Colossae, there's a message to one particular person towards the end of the book. Paul writes, and tell Archippus, see to it that you complete the ministry that you received in the Lord. And many commentators, when I started to look it up, were wondering, what is this ministry? Is it preaching? Is it teaching? Is it evangelizing? What could it be? And fortunately, being brethren, I have the answer. Because according to the stories that were preserved by the people in Colossae, the column of fire was the archangel Michael. And Archippus, the person mentioned in this letter to Colossae and also mentioned to the other letter to Colossae, which is the letter to Philemon, one of the, the, the leader of one of the house churches in Colossae, where he is also mentioned as a fellow soldier of Paul. Fortunately... There are a word, a word is used that makes it clear. Archippus, by the legend, stood before the column of fire, which he believed to be the archangel Michael, and he heard the voice, the rumbling, the thunder, and all the fear in the midst of all that. He heard a voice speaking to him. Now, probably the cause of that column of fire is that the river Lycus used to run underneath the city of Colossae, but Colossae was where two fault lines met, and when the rumbling occurred, it collapsed. And you would say, how could rushing water start a column of fire? Well, evidently, there's something called hydrostatic friction in which the gases beneath the earth can be ignited by the falling of the rock, the rushing water, and it can be spectacular as anybody who didn't get bored by the first two episodes of The Rings of Power and stuck with it all the way to episode six can testify. Not my fault if you weren't ready for that spoiler. But what did Archippus hear? Well, see, the problem is people see the word ministry and they're thinking, oh yeah, ministry. That has to involve thoughts and prayers. But the word isn't ministry. It's a brethren word. It's based on the word deacon. Now, in some denominations, a deacon is somebody who wears a solemn robe and assists at worship. But in the ancient church, and as was recovered by the brethren, a deacon is the person in charge of feeding people. When Martha is complaining to Jesus that she's not getting any help from her sister Mary, she says, she's not helping me deacon this food. The word deacon means table waiter, whether it's done in a religious setting or in a restaurant or at home. And so it's obvious to me that if Archippus is to be deaconing the people of Colossae a year after this earthquake, the commission he would have been receiving is to feed my sheep to engage in disaster relief, to make sure that the people who crawled out from underneath the rubble and slowly began to rebuild had food to eat and shelter, no matter how simple, to protect them. The archangel Michael, as Archippus heard it, this message from an angel was to take care of people. Most of you have not been around during an earthquake. Jenny and I have, and maybe a few others. And when it starts, you don't know when it's going to end, and you don't know how bad it's going to get. And you don't know if this is just, just the precursor quake to where the really big one is going to happen. But all you know is that everything is shaking. And that if you live in the third world, the walls are coming down. 
and you don't know if you will live and die. But just as the angel said to the women, this is my message for you, so the archangel Michael says to Archippus, this is my message for you, and he stood his ground just like the women did. And today, as people who serve a resurrected Lord, we need to have the courage to stand our ground in the face of overwhelming harm, in the face of lies that are spread as truth, in the face of disasters which destroy lives, in the face of overwhelming problems that are too great for any one of us, and to hear the ministry of deaconing to which we in particular have been called, the little piece of the world that we can save because we serve a risen Lord, because, as Paul reminds the Colossians, we are looking up. We are looking up for the things that are above, where Christ is sitting at God's right side. We died and our life is hidden, but all is going to be revealed in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You are meant for the company of angels. Others may have something to fear. You can be afraid, but you belong. That's what it means to serve a risen Lord. Our perspective becomes different. Our hearts will pound like anybody else's. Our blood will race a little faster, and our blood pressure will rise. But we will also hear the voice coming clearly out of the thunder, out of the rumbling, out from the confusion. And we will realize that God has equipped us to take this message to the world. <clears throat> the Lord is risen, and because of that, we can face tomorrow, and we can be God's people in difficult circumstances because we are not alone. We are part of a 2,000-year array of saints and many more to come. The angel told the women, the angel told Archippus, and the angel tells us this is my message for you. Listen in your hearts. Hear the message and prepare to change the world. And in the process, prepare to meet the risen Lord. Amen. I'd like to invite the worship team to come forward at this time. And to thank you all for being present here today, present earlier this morning for the wonderful service we shared, and present for each other. Over the past four or five years, this has kind of been our anthem at Easter. And what I try to tell the team and tell other people, let's sing it like we wrote it.
Do not be afraid. I know that you're looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, as he said. Go forward in faith, seeking Jesus where he is to be found, in the life and love of all who share the good will of God. Go in peace. Amen. <laughs>